It didn't say that the weapon wouldn't form. It said it wouldn't prosper. Many of us have seen the weapon form. But I decree on this day it shall not prosper. What's happening today is generational. We were in Williamsburg this past week, and uh, today, we, this is all about understanding that he's a good, good father. You don't have to sit, just, we just, but we went to Target, my dad and my son and I, because whenever I go to the store, my son jumps up, he wants to go to the store. So we go into the store, and we're there to get groceries, just to get groceries. And my son looks up as soon as we walk in the door. He's like, can I get a surprise? And I'm like, dude, every time you go in the store, you don't. it doesn't mean you're going to get something. And it's not a surprise if you ask for it. And I, uh, so I said, no, you know, you, you don't get something every time. And da, 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 da. And he, he, um. handled it well. He's okay. So we walk around the store. He does good. The whole time he's just he's, he's handled it well. And after we got the groceries in it, we're on our way out. And this whole time he's holding, you know, he's under my arm. And he grabbed my wrist like this and looked up at me and said, Daddy, do you think maybe I could get a surprise? I was like, boy, I just told you we're not doing this. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, let's walk over and let's look to see something we may get later. So we walked over there. And he got a surprise. And 
see as kingdom citizens, sons of the Most High God. What you have to realize is the things that we desire to do for our children, God desires to do for us. In Luke 12, 31 through 32, keep going. It says, but strive for and actively seek his kingdom. And these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid and anxious, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. See, it was my good pleasure because I could. Not because he did something special or did. The boy just got something. I was like, man, you don't need anything else. And I gave him a 10-minute lecture. That's, that's enough. You don't need Every time you walk in the store, you don't have to have something. I don't want you raising you to think like this. Da, 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 da. But it only took him holding his father's hand and looking up and saying, Daddy, do you think? See, in the church, we are too easy. We easily identify with being, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen. You are a citizen. But in order to be a citizen, you've got to be a son and a daughter. I'm a citizen of the United States, which means I got some rights. I can vote. I can do all kinds of stuff, drive a car, buy and sell. I can do all that. That's fine. We've got an army, a navy, and they protect us as citizens. And even if I go out of the country... It's something uh, was to happen to me. I got an embassy I can go to, and my country will come to protect its citizens. But I want y'all to know Joe Biden's kids are, are, are walking in something a little bit different than just what a citizen has. There's a protective detail that surrounds them. They go before them to make sure where they're going is safe. They go after them to make sure nobody's following. They've got hosts with them to make sure they have whatever they need. See, they're operating above just being a citizen. See, they have access to the most powerful man They, they have access to the world's secrets, even though they probably shouldn't. As citizens, we don't have that access. But as sons and daughters of the most powerful man in the United States, you got the Army, you got the Navy, they they got folks with them. There they go. Hey, here they come. So as a church, we're so quick to identify, I'm a citizen, I'm a citizen. You better know that you're a son and a daughter. Because there are moments like this where you just need to look up and say, Dad, you think maybe? Because you said in Luke 12 that it is your good it's your good pleasure. You, you desire. You want. I'm not asking you for something you don't want to do. You want to give it to me. And see, we talk about that in a democracy, but let's, this is, we, we don't function in a democracy. The United States does. We come from a kingdom where there's no Senate. There's no, nobody's voting him in. Nobody's voting him out. I don't have to take something and put it before Congress or the Senate. It's whatever the king says. Whether you like it or don't like it, you don't get a vote. All that to be said is what? So when you go and you look up at daddy and say, well, dad, well, well, well maybe you think. It doesn't matter if somebody said, well, I asked and it didn't happen for me. It don't matter what other, well, they don't deserve that. They shouldn't have that. I know that, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It is the Father's good pleasure. But if you're walking around only like a citizen, like all you can do is vote and drive cars, and <laughs> you won't ever sit on his lap and just say, well, Dad, I, I know you don't have to, but could you? Would you? I'm going to worship you anyway. 
because you've been so good to me. But, Lord, there, there are some things on my heart to, that I'd like to do. We got to go past this religious front and get to the place where you realize this is your father. And it's his good pleasure. It's the thing that he desires to do. But you got to come up above a citizen and realize that you're a son and a daughter. And so when you have an atmosphere like, like this, what, what, what you just sat in is you sitting in the presence of your father. But if you have the heart of a citizen, not understanding that in order to be a citizen, you got to be a son or a daughter, then, then you will operate based on basic rules. Thinking, if I do this, I then. And this is just a moment where you just got to look up and say, Lord, would. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the kingdom that you just can't work for. And y'all got to hear what I'm going to say. Ask and it shall be given. But you have to ask from the position of knowing who you are. You're not just a servant. You're not just a citizen. You are a son and a daughter with a father whose good pleasure. Not your good pleasure. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I'm not even going to try to preach this message. But as your father in heaven, what he's looking for are sons and daughters. We are quick to be citizens, but he's looking for sons and daughters. Think about when you're around your parents. Every time you're around your parents, you don't, it can't just be all, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. It can't just be all about, I'm, do, I'm trying to do all these things to impress you. You're my child. You can just chill. We can just hang out. I just want to be in your I just want to hang around with you. I don't we? We make this thing in the sun. He just wants to be with you and you with him. There is a time to ask. Absolutely. I'm all for it. There is a time to serve. But there's time where he just wants to be with you. Just hanging out. And in those moments, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. In those moments, because the king has all authority, he can just look and say, yeah, do that for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do, do that for them. You might even have a problem asking for it. But he's saying, that's my son. That's my daughter. Yeah, make that house happen for them. This is how you get stuck in situations where people, how did this happen? And you're going. Because I'm a son. What, what do you mean you're a son? You, what, who? Because um, I'm a son. Because my daddy is just that good. I know we've been taught all these different things of hitting the mark and doing all that. And yes, we should do all that stuff. But your life is a representation of how good he is. So the type of blessing and anointing and flow that should be on your life should be such that when people ask you, well, how in the world, what makes you think, da, 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 you, um, I'm a son. My daddy's rich. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, so I'm going I'm to I'm I'm hit you with, with Mario's. So miss me with the fake humble. <laughs> Pass the Mario quote. <laughs> Even to the point where we talk about, well, I don't deserve it. You are who, son? 
oh, you deserve it. Now, you may not deserve it for what you've done, but you deserve it for what he has done. All right, let me try. Now that y'all would let me preach a message again. talk a little bit about what this thing looks like, sonship. We got to flow by the Holy Ghost. Okay, hallelujah. That's what we do. Thank you, thank you. All right. Here's your mom. Say hi, mom. Here's your dad. Boy, y'all, quick, look at y'all. And here's life. So, mom, we're going to call mom Lolo. And so, mom, because we're all earthen vessels, had some stuff happen to her when, in her childhood. Some dark stuff. Her parents were there, but maybe her uncle molested her. People made fun of her. Told her all that she couldn't be. And so mom is an earthen vessel, and she's walking around dark and unfulfilled. Dad's name is Bubba. I thought y'all was in the spirit. And so Bubba didn't have a dad, so Bubba was mad. He had to start working early in life and had to take help take care of the house, so Bubba spent his life getting angry. Two earthen vessels. Life has dumped what life had to offer into them. And now one night, they downtown in Richmond, And Bubba and Lolo meet. Hey. <laughs> and they get married first. <laughs> to be clear. And they're like, hey, we like each other. Great. Let's get married. Fantastic. Now they decide to have a child after they're married. But these are two half-full vessels full of things that don't necessarily look too pure, but they're doing the best they can. And so now they come together, and they make, what's the son's name? <laughs> then they make little Bubba. And so mom pours all that she can pour into little Bubba. But she got to save a little bit for herself. And dad pulls all he can pour. He got to save a little bit for himself. And so now here you are, little bubble. Still half empty. Still filled with toxins. But your parents gave you all that they could give you. The Bible talks that you have to be born again. And it says when you're born again that, the, that, that the, spirit will, the spirit will come upon you. And we are to be filled with his spirit. See, this is why in life you, 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 you can't necessarily blame your parents because they gave you all that they had to give. And everybody started half empty because there's a part of you that can only be filled by the spirit of God. But our problem is we'll go through and we'll try to fill this space with all kinds of, we'll fill it with women, we'll fill it with food, we'll fill it with TV, we'll fill it with drugs, we'll fill it with whatever we think we can fill it with. But it still won't make you full. And while people will deal with you, this doesn't look like an appetizing drink. 
But then it says the spirit will come upon you, overtake you. It would fill you. Get saved. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, now you're full. Hallelujah. But (laughs) it's still some stuff in there. And so just like the experience we just had, you just keep on saying, Lord, fill me. Come on. Just, Just fill me, Lord. Keep on filling me, Lord. Give me your goodness. Tell me who I am, God. Lord, I just thank you for all that you've done in my life and all that you're doing. And see these tall Rambo calls say that, Lord, I just thank you so much, Lord. And see, all of a sudden, those toxins get washed out. You got a cup that's full. And so the source, the Father who is filling you, you can't tell the difference between the source and little Bubba. So what Jesus said is, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How could he say that? Because he'd been filled with Holy Spirit till he overflowed. And it just flushed everything out. And now you can't tell the difference between the source itself and the source is unlimited. And The Father is your source. We all started with some toxins. We all started with some junk. But what you want to do, fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Keep on filling me, God. Flush me, Lord. And if impurities happen to show up again, all that needs to happen, just give me some more. This never, ever, I don't care if you're 180 and you have read the Bible 50,000 times. Keep getting filled. So when people ask the question, how do you think you could do X, Y, and Z? Because I am he. He is my source. He is on the inside of me. Christ in the hope of glory. He's in you. The same stuff that he's made of, you are made of. And with the lie of religion in the world, you so far away from him. No, no, there's no. He made the body to hold him. We call this a sanctuary, but this ain't the sanctuary. This is a building that is a worship center. I am the sanctuary. I know that messes with some folks because you thought the room was holy. The room ain't holy. You are holy. So Jesus paid the price. So that you could be filled again, like Adam was once. With the same stuff as your father. And he has prepared a sanctuary, and you are it. Now, as a son and a daughter, in order to be a son and a daughter, it means you got to have the DNA. And see, it talks about the Holy Spirit coming upon uh, coming upon you twice, more than twice. But these two times I call out. The first time was when he was talking to Mary. He said, okay, hold on, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and then you shall have a child. Then again, it says it again in Acts. The Holy Spirit will come, wait here until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Holy Spirit has come upon you. Once you've given your life to Christ and declared him as Lord and Savior, now be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you can miss me with the fake humble. No. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I mean, this, this ain't just, people ask, uh, I try to get some, um, I don't know. God is good. No, I'm bad. No, 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 no. 
I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend. Listen, the, the, the biblical definition of humble and the world's definition of humble are not the same thing. The world says, play down what you are and, you know, so that other people are comfortable. I'm not here to make you comfortable. The Bible definition says, I am all that he says that I am. So I'm not going to pretend that I'm not. Now, I'm not going to go and gloat about something that I'm not. But if he says, I, if he says I'm the head and not the tail, I'm never going to agree with you that I'm the tail. If he called me to do whatever he said about me is the truth. So what did God say about you? Stop playing that thing down. You're doing a disservice to your father who has filled you. And now you're trying to act like you ain't all that. No, no, I'm that person. What, what is it that you need? Because my Father in heaven loves you enough that he filled me so that I could help you with whatever it is that you got going on. So we're going to have humility in, in this ministry. But the humility in this ministry looks like squared up shoulders. God for this. You mean to tell me you're going to have 10, 11 campuses in Richmond? Yep. You mean to tell, oh, you really think you can revival? Yes. I can name a whole bunch of other stuff. Godfidence. Godfidence. Because it is he who lives in you. And for you to deny that is to deny your father. Look at how Jesus talked. We, we play that stuff down and we make it so simple and sweet. Man, when he was praying, he was like, Lord, I know you hear me when I play. I'm just praying out loud so they can hear me. And God was saying, miss me with that fake humble. I just need your confidence to get built up because you need to know that you are a son and a daughter of the living God. Religion will let you be a citizen. But the kingdom ensures that you are a son and a daughter who has more than just rights. You have a relationship with the one who creates the rights. So at any given time, I can make a right for you that I didn't make for anybody else. Y'all got to get it. Democracy says it's got to be fair. Everything got to be equal. God says, I am just. I'm not fair. <laughs> Why you give him a 10,000 square foot house? Because I wanted to. The parable of the 11th hour worker. All these guys worked all this time, and then at the very last minute, these other guys show up, and they got paid the same. They're like, hey, man, what's... it ain't none of your business. So stop looking at your life, comparing your life to other stuff. As a son of God, as a daughter of God, all the king has to do is look and says, yeah, I'm going to bless my daughter. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. It ain't even got to make sense to you. But you got to realize who you are so that you can receive the blessing that he has for you. So we're not going to operate anymore just like sons, just like uh, citizens. Because we missed the fact, be in the kingdom, in order to be a citizen, you got to be a son or a daughter. This is a family. If you were the son of the dude who owns Amazon, you wouldn't be walking around like, uh, some of y'all don't, don't need to be Bezos' son, y'all probably, but <laughs> you wouldn't walk in a dealership going, well, maybe. Uh, you'd be like, my dad worth $180 billion or whatever it is. Give me that, that, that. You want one too? You want one of them? You can have one. You walk up to the, to the neighborhood when they had houses for sale, they'd be like, which house do you want? I want them all. Give me all of them because I got some people I want to bless. There is an authority in the earth. That when we get our mind wrapped around who we are in him, I'm not talking about covet just stupidness. I, I, I'm sorry. That may not have sounded that great. But it is what it is. I'm not talking about just bragging and saying it's not about that. It's about the fact that 
I am here to bring the kingdom into the earth. And so whatever is necessary to make that possible, if it's a whole neighborhood, a city block, an entire city, a billion dollars, a hundred billion dollars, or one dollar, whatever that is, God will give it to me. Because I'm his child. And he seeks to acquire, to adopt all of his children, and he's going to use his children to go help adopt the rest of his children. That was the reminder <laughs> that you are a son and a daughter. So on this Father's Day, while we honor our natural father, make sure you realize that we don't just call God Father just because that's what you were taught to call him. You better know what Father means. It means you are my source, my maintainer, my provider. I am, you are my everything. And if you are my everything and you own everything, and it's your good pleasure to give me the kingdom, why are you negotiating in your own head about what you think you should have? It is your inheritance. Now, I'm talking about a heart that stayed on him now. I'm not talking about just walking around trying to get stuff so other people think you're special. I'm talking about a heart that stayed on him and that the desires of your actual heart come to pass. And in so doing, the kingdom is made manifest and you show the goodness of your father. Hmm. So know today, that by the filling of Holy Spirit, you are made to look like him. And if we seen you, see, I, I know your, your challenge is, is you look in the mirror and, 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 and you are still looking at the you that had the all the stuff in it. But that, that fresh flow from the river of Holy Spirit has filled you. And has washed you clean. So if we've seen you, we've seen the Father. And the works that you saw him do, you shall do also. But you've got to remember that you're a son and a daughter. So Father, I thank you right now. For not just information, but revelation that comes with demonstration that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. That we are the children of the great I Am. And for anyone who doesn't know, I Am means exactly that. I Am dot, dot, dot. Whatever it is that you need. We are the descendants. We are the DNA possessors of the King of Kings. And therefore, there is absolutely no limit to what God will do for us and through us. We bind up the enemy and his lies of lack. And we loose the DNA of heaven to lead God and direct us into all of your promises and to wholeness. In the name of Jesus.